What's up everyone, Seth Miranda here. This is Adorama Rewind and uh, happy Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. Sorry, I had to get that out of my system. Uh, pretty concise week yet again. I just want to keep it like real tight these days because I'm doing a ton of live streams here on Adorama if you haven't checked them out. Facebook, Adorama, every day, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I should say every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have a guest with me every time. Uh, this week is going to be Daniel Norton, I have Ken Klosterman, I have Sal D'Elia, who's behind the TTL series. You're going to want to check that one out. And uh, Jason DeFilippo from the Grumpy Old Geeks podcast and a few others. We had past people like Joe McNally, Vanessa Joy, uh, Jamie Price, Spooky from uh, Team Spooky on Twitch, one of the top 100 channels on Twitch. If you're into streaming, you might want to check that out. And many more. Make sure you check that out. But let's get into this week's news. Canon software, it's in beta, uh, lets your Canon camera be used as a webcam. So there's a few things you should know about this off the bat. Main thing that's happening here is you're able to use your USB cable into your computer and have it recognized as a video source. So right now people are trying to find cam links or anything that's an external video capture device to make your computer see your camera as a video device or actually feeding video into it. While many cameras are actually discoverable via USB onto things like Skype, Ecamm, or Zoom, um, and a lot of other things using a lot of free software to like Sparkle Cam or whatever. Uh, this is the Canon EOS utility, which actually allows it to be seen in things like OBS, uh, which will is what I'm using right now to record this. So instead of me having to use a cam link, if the, if you were using Canon, you were able to be a discoverable device. The caveats, one, if you're not using HDMI to push the video out and you're using USB like this, you won't get audio out of your camera. So you're gonna need an external audio device for that because you won't be getting anything out of the mic on board in your camera. And also, so the topped out resolution is 576p at 30 frames per second. So that's about a quarter of the 1080 signal that you could get out of some of these cameras. Not a big deal though, because usually when you're live streaming, it doesn't matter about the resolution too much. You know, you're looking at color, you're looking at density. You're not really looking at um, the resolution per se. In fact, nobody's really streaming at 4K right now anyway. So this is a pretty cool step in the right direction. Canon, I, I applaud you for getting on the board with pretty much what live streaming is about right now. If you guys wanna see some more stuff about live streaming setups, you can check out my YouTube channel, but I have an ever growing playlist going on there. But what we have to keep in mind is that none of these cameras were designed to go be webcams. They just happen to be able to put out a video signal. Now it's the job of getting your computer to recognize that camera and have them work together pretty well with all the software that already exists, like things like OBS. So check this out. If you have a Canon, you might want to give this a shot. Uh, this works with a list of cameras. They have them listed right there on their website uh, from the Canon R to the Rebel series. So you guys, if you're a Canon fan, I'm sure you're going to give this a shot. I mean, why wouldn't you, right? Uh, especially now that we're all working from home or just trying to keep in touch with people via Zoom and other like web chatting software. Why not use the gear you already have to its full potential? In some Adobe news, they're giving away a bunch of grants. Yep, up to a million dollars. They're calling it the Adobe Creative Residency Community Fund. Just rolls off the tongue. They're looking at about one million US dollars that they're putting out there for grants of 500 up to $5,000 for personal projects. Applications are open now, right now. Go apply if you're a visual artist. They'll be reviewed each month. It's gonna run for a year, so give it a shot. Just to give you an idea of the things they're looking for, they're, they wanna see video, photo, UI, UX, uh, 3D product design, things like that, illustration. So if you're an artist in that uh, genre or medium, so to speak, give it a shot, go apply. And the only thing that you need to worry about is being over 18 and being proficient in either English or Japanese as a language. Other than that, you're pretty much set. And what's the harm in applying? Right now, everybody could use a little bit of help. Uh, and I think that this is, this is great that all these huge companies are looking to give grants to keep people out there working, using the software, keeping themselves sharp, putting more work out there. And the more work we put out there, the more the inspiration keeps going, the more ambition we see out there. And we don't see gaps in the workflow in our society pretty much, or in our industry, I should say. Uh, Raspberry Pi. Yeah, I never talk about Raspberry Pi, but this is super interesting and I'm going to try to talk Adoram into like letting me do something with this for here. 
Uh, yeah, they made a high quality camera, or at least that's what they're saying, and it has an interchangeable lens mount. So you're looking at 12.3 megapixel Sony sensor, a pretty small sensor, like a 7.9 millimeter diagonal, uh, but it does have support for C and CS mount lenses, which are basically CCTV lenses or 16 millimeter film camera lenses. Uh, and it's, I think it's screw mount, I'm pretty sure. And what this basically means is that you have, this is the whole unit. You have a quarter 20 thread mount for a tripod. You have literally just a circuit board with a sensor on it and you can mount your lens and your capturing images. It can also do video at 4K 30 resolution and frame rate, which is pretty cool. And I think this is the stuff that I really get psyched on mainly because you can take this with your kids or just take it if you're a teacher into a classroom setting of some kind and just show them like the raw components of a circuit board with a sensor on it and show them how they can make digital imaging right there for a low price of 50 bucks. What a cool kit. I mean, Raspberry Pi has been doing stuff like this for a long time. One thing I wanna show you guys though is that there are mount adapters. So if you wanna mount an EF lens to this CCTV lens mount, you can do it. So if you have some lenses laying around and you already have adapters, uh, you can actually make this happen for 50 bucks. You have a digital camera, 12.3 megapixel, and that's pretty cool. And I mean, clearly it doesn't take up a lot of space and all that other stuff. This is the kind of stuff I get hyped up on. I mean, Raspberry Pi has been around for a long time, and I even have one that I'm turned into an emulator for a Super Nintendo. I probably shouldn't say that publicly, right? Mm. Uh, but this is how we strip down all this crazy technology to its bare bones to see what it really is and how younger people can actually grow up learning what it actually is rather than just figuring out how to use things that already exist. This is how we progress and this is kind of the fun of the technology as well. I'm pretty hyped on this. I, I, Adorama, please, let's get into doing something with this. I'm, I'm psyched, I'm super psyched. Keeping with the technology talk we're, we're into right now, British Museum just made 1.9 million images free online of all their pieces that they have available. Uh, go check it out. There are a lot of museums doing this, so if you're stuck at home, there's a lot of free exhibitions going on online. Of course, it's not like being there in reality, but it is pretty cool that you have access to just seeing what has been created in the history of humankind, right? 1.9 million detailed images free online. That is insane. 1.9 million divided by 1,440. The answer is about 1,319.4444. Even if that took you like one minute per image, I'm pretty sure that's like over 1,300 days to go get through all this on this website. So why wouldn't you take advantage of this? This is crazy. I'm gonna also include a link to the Petapixel article about it because at the bottom, they give you a few other uh, places you can check out, like a Paris museum that does it. And you can also search online for more resources on uh, online museums or just talk about that Colorado photo uh, exhibition going on and there's online documentary viewings and stuff like that. So there's a lot of resources out there and a lot of content for you to absorb and it's like high quality content, not just somebody who just randomly decided to go on YouTube throwing something up there and hoping you see it, but rather accredited organizations that have incredible catalogs for you to ingest. I mean, go and check this out. But the shout out of the week, you guys didn't tell me I skipped it last time and I totally forgot about it. It's been a little hectic, I apologize about that. But uh, this person I think does some really clean work and I think they deserve some notice and I'm probably gonna say their name wrong, but Halewin Roberts Photography, I gotta give you some credit. Look at how cool the work is, how really clean it is. Very conceptual, yet very commercial and clean. I'm really into it. I think they uh, really see something and go for it. I love this image right here. Uh, it's pretty much of a bird's neck. I think they said it was a crane, but look at all that detail in the feathers. It's so beautiful. Uh, really take a minute and check out their Instagram. Go give them a follow. And I'm gonna try to keep continuing with these shout outs of the week. So hopefully, uh, you know, I'll get to everybody in the Adorama universe, but we are getting to 1 million subscribers slowly but surely. We are getting there. We're very close. So you guys that are following right now, you're one in a million. And if you haven't hit subscribe, go ahead and hit it right now. And don't forget that bell so you're notified of videos like this. And also remember, we got this playlist going on for the create no matter what hashtag. Hashtag create no matter what hashtag Adorama. So tag that on everything you're putting out there so we can see what you're doing. And if you're not sure what to do, well, we made a create no matter what playlist for you. Check it out. Uh, these are all challenges you can take a shot at. Nah, little pun there, take a shot at. We kicked it off with multiple exposures with Vanessa Joy. So she shows you how to use 
old images on your memory card and then shoot on the spot to create a new image with a multiple exposure. Freezing water droplets with Gavin Hoey. I mean, this one's super fun. You don't need a lot of equipment. You don't need a lot of space. And it's one of the fun things that you can do with your kids and get a really cool image out of it. Plus, it's one of these skills that's fun to hone and actually bring into like a commercial uh, type environment should you want to. Uh, and then documenting your world with David Bergman. He's talking about kind of the need to document what's happening in our world right now. DIY lighting modifiers with Daniel Norton. This one's really, really fun using just stuff that he has around him to create the light that he wants, shooting like this little troll doll, which is pretty cool. And I have one coming out this week on Wednesday and there's more coming. So don't forget to check out this playlist on Adorama TV. And uh, listen, we're all in this together and let's just keep sharing. Don't forget to use the hashtag, create no matter what, hashtag Adorama, tag Adorama, tag the hosts, you know, me, Daniel Norton, Mark Wallace, Gavin Hoey, uh, Vanessa Joy, David Bergman, I mean, everybody that's on the Adorama TV uh, list, you should just let them know that you're out there creating and we'll try to keep tabs on everything that's going on out there. All right, in the spirit of Dan's last video with the DIY lighting modifiers, my question of the week is, what have you guys been doing on a DIY level? What is the most at home, no real frills setup you guys have done. You see me use pizza boxes and aluminum foil. I wanna know what kind of uh, dollar store items or just like home items you're using to create the setups you want, whether it's photo, video, audio, whatever. I mean, we've seen people take Starbucks cup holders and staple them to a wall to make sure that they have soundproofing in their area. Let me know what you're doing for your DIY solutions down below and I will see you guys next time. Peace.